going to go through cellular respiration and how I discuss it is how I want you to understand it. So a lot of this is just big picture. So the three steps of cellular respiration, remember we have glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, also called Krebs cycle, also sometimes referred to as the TCA cycle, and then the electron transport chain. <clears throat> glycolysis is anaerobic meaning it does not require oxygen in order to proceed. Glycolysis also takes place in the cytoplasm, okay? The citric acid cycle and the electron transport chain, these two portions, these require oxygen. So they are said to be aerobic, right? So oxygen must be present for these two um, to run, okay? And these take place in the mitochondria. So glycolysis is anaerobic in the cytoplasm, citric acid cycle and electron transport chain aerobic and take place in the mitochondria. So cellular respiration, so we, uh, it will produce the whole, all of those three steps, all of the reactions that take place in those three steps of cellular respiration, um, we will produce carbon dioxide as a waste product. And so carbon dioxide has to eventually make its way, you know, through the blood to the lungs to be exhaled. So carbon dioxide is a waste byproduct. It will produce water, heat, because remember energy transfer is never 100%. So a lot of that energy, a lot of that energy um, that we are take transferring from the bonds of glucose into the bonds of ATP, a lot of that will be lost as heat, okay? And then our main product, which we're most concerned with, is our ATP energy. And this is the chemical energy that the cell needs to drive all metabolic processes. Okay? And again, anaerobic without oxygen, that would be glycolysis. Aerobic requires oxygen, that's citric acid cycle and the electron transport chain. So glycolysis. So there are, let's see, let me go ahead and go to this slide. So there are three major uh, steps to glycolysis, and these big arrows represent a series of reactions. So this is a very simplified um, pathway. Um, and no, I don't expect you to know all of these intermediates. I'm not going to ask that. I want you to understand what is the point of glycolysis, what are we putting in, and what are we getting out, okay? So what we're putting in, what we're starting with, is a six carbon glucose molecule. So if you count these black circles, one, two, three, four, five, six, we're starting with a six carbon glucose, right? And by the end, we're, uh, we end with two, three carbon pyruvic acids. If you count the black dots, one, two, three, okay? And because glucose has six carbons, and pyruvic acid only has three, we end up with two pyruvic acid molecules. Now, throughout the series of all of these reactions, uh, let's break it down into three major steps. The first phase, rather, okay, the first phase of glycolysis is called priming. I like to call it the energy investment step <clears throat> or energy investment phase. And the reason I call it the energy investment is because if you look, we're actually taking ATP and we get ADP out of it. So that means like we're taking two ATP and we're chopping off those high energy phosphates and we're adding them to the glucose. So you can see that the six carbon molecule now has two phosphates added onto the end. So we actually had to use ATP in order to do that. So you may be asking, well, I thought we were supposed to make ATP, not use ATP. So just like a savings account, you have to put something in first in order to um, accumulate interest on it and to make more money. Same thing with cellular respiration. We put in a little bit, we put into ATP, right? That's our investment. And then we end up getting a lot more out if we're able to go through all three steps of cellular respiration. So we utilize 2-ATP in the energy investment phase. The second phase is the cleavage phase, meaning cleavage we're breaking, we're breaking bonds. And we go from one 6-carbon molecule to two 3-carbon molecules, okay? 
each one of these will undergo the third phase of glycolysis. And the third phase, I call it the, um, uh, it, this is where we get our energy out. We, we get energy back, okay? ATP energy back. Um, so energy harvesting phase is what I like to call it. This book calls it oxidation and formation of ATP. I like to call it the energy harvesting phase, okay? Through, so through a series of these reactions, okay, represented by this arrow, what happens is we take each one of these three carbon molecules and we will generate two ATP from each, right? So that gives us an this gives us four ATP total from the energy harvesting phase, two from each one of these three carbon molecules, okay? Now, because we had to put two ATP in, in the energy investment phase, we get four ATP out from the energy harvesting phase. Our net gain is only two ATP, okay? So our net gain is only two ATP. Now, we also get two NADHs, right? So one from each of these three carbon molecules, two NADHs. Now these are high energy electron carriers. So electrons get transferred to these NAD molecules and we form NADH. Now these are important not yet because we can't utilize these for energy right away like ATP. ATP can go and be used in chemical reactions right away. NADH has to go to the electron transport chain, and that's how we will get energy from those high electron um, carriers, okay? But right now, we'll just keep tally, so you should have a piece of paper next to you and keep count of what we're getting, okay, out of these, out of these steps of uh, cellular respiration. So through glucose, or through glycolysis, we're starting with a six carbon glucose molecule, okay? We go through our energy investment phase where we use up 2 ATP. Then we cleave it into two three carbon molecules, each of which will enter into the energy harvesting phase. And when both of these three carbon molecules go through the energy harvesting phase, we get four ATP, but because we used two initially, our net gain is only two. So we get two ATP. We also get two NADHs and two pyruvic acids. So on my list, I keep a list and to tally what it is that we get out. Glycolysis, we net two ATP, we get two NADHs, and we get two pyruvic acids. And the pyruvic acid can then go and enter into the citric acid cycle. So the point of glycolysis, the big picture, is to make the pyruvic acid which is needed to start the citric acid cycle, okay? To, this is what's needed to go into the mitochondria to start the citric acid cycle. And through the citric acid cycle and the electron transport chain, that's where we get the bulk of our ATP energy being produced, okay? So point of glycolysis is to really get these pyruvic acids. Right? And glycolysis, because it's an anaerobic process, right? if our cells are undergoing lots of metabolism and they use up the oxygen very quickly, okay, and maybe no oxygen is immediately available, total ATP production doesn't completely stop. We can still make some ATP through this anaerobic process called glycolysis. And that's going to be really important when we... Um, talk about muscle physiology and how we can how cells like muscle cells can continue to make some ATP energy is through this lactic acid cycle down here. And I'm going to talk about this because I will bring it back up in the muscle chapter and so you will have already learned it and it will make it easier later on. So, in the case of if we if we have oxygen present, the pyruvic acid will go into the mitochondria and we'll continue cellular respiration with the citric acid cycle and the electron transport chain. If oxygen is not available, then this pyruvic acid gets converted to lactic acid. So this is a type of fermentation. So we have <clears throat> the pyruvic acids, if no oxygen is present, okay? So that's where this split is showing you. 
If oxygen is present, pyruvic acid goes to the citric acid cycle. If oxygen is not present, it gets converted to lactic acid through fermentation. And the reason for that is because if you look, when we go from pyruvic acid to lactic acid, we take those NADHs that we just made and we convert it back to this NAD+. Plus, okay? Reason for that is because NADHs, these are electron high energy electron um, carriers. We can only utilize these in the electron transport chain. Well, if oxygen's not present, the electron transport chain is not running. So there's no need to have these high energy electron carriers because we can only use them if oxygen is present. Well, oxygen isn't present, so we convert it back to this NAD+, we make lactic acid, and now this NAD plus can go back and go through these steps again, because look, NAD plus is required right here to continue these steps. And if we don't have NAD plus, we can't make the few ATP that we are able to make through glycolysis. So does that make sense? Pyruvic acid, if oxygen is present, we go to the citric acid cycle because we can make a whole lot more ATP through the citric acid cycle and the electron transport chain. If oxygen isn't present, two ATP is better than no ATP, so pyruvic acid gets converted to lactic acid, regenerating this NAD+, and now these NAD pluses can go back here and we can make more ATP through this energy harvesting phase, okay? So that's the why it's called the lactic acid cycle, because it would just go through that, okay?